Good afternoon, all of you. And uh, this post class session is a real challenge for all of us. Good morning, you have been uh, in the session. And uh, now, for obvious reasons, uh, this is a uh, uh, role reversal for you also uh, because you are generally your uh, teaching the students, uh, whereas now you are on the other side. So uh, it is I and uh, we are nice because we also have to be there at times or have been there. So it's a real challenge um, to really uh, play that role for that uh, length of time which we expect from our students. Uh, so I also understand that. So what my request is that, especially with this is not going to be a lecture sort of a session, uh, primarily after all, at the end of the day, you are my colleagues. And uh, uh, many of you may be knowing much more than me on this topic. Uh, and so I would uh, request all of you to share your uh, whatever uh, ideas or experiences you have while we are discussing on the topic. And uh, uh, so, uh, with your, uh, this particular faculty development program, with the theme of emerging trends in business analytics for data-driven decision making, uh, this is, uh, I would say, a very relevant uh, topic today, uh, because uh, all these uh, analytics that uh, we are hearing the talk, now we are talking about business analytics or data analytics or whatever. Uh, is it really something uh, new that we are doing? Or uh, analytics uh, was there all along this? And especially we will be discussing my topic uh, is uh, primarily you can see business and analytics. So I try to um, focus on how analytics is being used in business decisions. Uh, not really going into or uh, trying to uh, uh, show a particular problem with data and analyzing and solving it. More to give you an idea of what is uh, the areas where really these applications are being done and what sort of decisions, business decisions actually we are seeing that uh, analytics is being used. Uh, so that would primarily be my uh, area uh, of uh, discussion today. So what uh, in business world, what we see is that uh, managers who are managing all the businesses, what is their prime, uh, I would say, role or function? What do they do? Anyone? So decision making is one of the most important things that a manager has to do. Or to run a business, we have to take several decisions for every day of the time. And this decision making is uh, going to be uh, qualitatively better or I would say there are different types of decisions where we can find that uh, uh, some level of uh, uncertainty is involved. So if some sort of uncertainty is there, then the decision becomes more risky. So there are different types of decisions, especially in a business world, uh, and, uh, there are so many factors which influences any function that uh, any decision, we cannot really always uh, say that this is a correct decision or this is the only decision or uh, at times we may know that uh, these could be the consequences but which one is correct we don't know. So there are different types of decisions. They can be starting from certain certainty on one end to ambiguity, total ambiguity at the other end of the total uh, frame, if we see. So in that case, uh, 
this uncertainty can be reduced by if we have more information. So the more information we have about what we are taking the decisions regarding that, then the decisions would be better in quality and also it would be much certain in that sense. So that is where uh, in business this uh, area, business management or decision making, the role of analytics is going to come in. Because it is this uh, analytics is nothing but based on a lot of information. Now information by itself is nothing. Until and unless we are able to interpret that decision. Uh, that, that information. And today is an age of information. In fact, we are overloaded with information. So now we have to actually screen and select the relevant information. Because there is so much information, uh, may, not, not more, most of those information may not be at all relevant to the job that I am doing or decision that I am taking. So uh, first, uh, important thing that we have to do is we have to identify what is the relevant information that we need. So we have to screen those types. So overloading of information is false, but at the same time, we to take a better decision, to take a better quality decision, we would be requiring more and more data and information. So uh, I'll just move on to uh, see that uh, really today in the world of business, uh, it is not a luxury or, that we are talking of, of using business analytics, but it's a necessity. For any stream, any function you see in business, whether it is production, supply chain, uh, purchase, uh, sales, finance, any function of business, you will find that we have to take decisions and a lot of information is there and we have to see that uh, these decisions are, uh, we are able to take proper decisions where these decisions are based on data that we are collecting. So, uh, and, uh, in today, as I was saying, that this is a very important and relevant topic. Why? It's because it is the total business is now being uh, run. And more in our data based decision making you are making, you are actually uh, coming to a stage where you are more competitively advantageous position. So, than your company. So the more information you have, you are able to collect about your customers, the more information you will know, the more you know about your customers, the more you know about your competitors, the more you know about the market, you would be able to take a better decision and a more, you would be in a, in a competition where you would be a part of your competitors. So, uh, coming back to what I was saying that uh, really what is business analytics for that matter? Any of you? Or what is analytics? So we uh, use the data which we get. Okay. So use means what? Uh, say we, uh, we get a set of how we are uh, taking the data and use it to our uh, So you do some analysis, you say? Is, is, it, is analytics different from analysis? Yes. Yeah. Important. Analysis is the basis on a particular one data. We have to analyze that particular data and after that we have to get a result. And analytics is multiple data collected and after that we have to analysis. And after that, the result is created, the outcome was created. That is an analysis. So, the both the word, anybody uh, maybe uh, number of data points is much more? Yes, sir. Is that what you can yes. say? That uh, data, uh, the uh, amount of data and information that you are processing is more in analytics and uh, 
but the process of analysis we are doing. Any, anyone else? The process of transforming data into insights. Data into insights, insights. is analytics. Uh, so, what do you do with that? Uh, we run various kind of statistical analysis so that we get knowledge and wisdom from the data. Okay. Uh, it is linked to, to some decisions, especially when we are discussing. I would say yes, in one way, uh, uh, there is a difference, as he pointed out, is uh, um, there's a lot of data. So from that data, first of all, uh, we use different techniques. Yes, of course, uh, statistical techniques, we have uh, say, it can be statistical techniques, it can be even other uh, mathematical techniques, uh, by which uh, we would first delve into the data to find out whether some uh, patterns or relationships uh, are there or not, we we'll try to recognize that, and based on that, we generally try to uh, come up with a model by which we would be seeing that, uh, that uh, all the data information that we have collected as to what is the output and then we interpret it to get uh, the additional what you say is knowledge or information or whatever that you want to look at. I would say it's not much of a difference if you see uh, the traditional way of uh, statistical analysis that we used to do. More of, uh, I would say, uh, old wine and new bottle. Say, uh, but the difference is there in the scale of operations. Difference is there in the uh, uh, techniques that we are using. And what has added to that is our uh, uh, technology, softwares, and all of these things, using of those, uh, we are using the software, so uh, the uh, statistical techniques previously which we were uh, able to do ourselves, now we are using, we, because it's on a much larger scale, so if we have more than three variables, we will be able to do a, uh, a segmentable regression calculation by ourselves. So we have to use a software. So in that case, so these techniques, so it is getting more and more complex in nature, where we are integrating the use of these softwares, integrating the uh, use of uh, uh, different types of data, and coming, trying to find out what uh, is our code which would be based on. So that, uh, that is uh, the big, uh, subtle difference between maybe analytics and analysis. And finally, uh, business analytics is, of course, whatever uh, all these things that we are using in business decisions. Although sometimes we are using analytics in many ways, we are uh, even saying business intelligence or market research. Uh, these are, I would say, all related terms, not exactly the same, but complementary. But let's see. What we have in store uh, for future? We'll try. So well, first, we'll just try to see what is uh, the level of use of business analytics at present in the business scenario, and where we are moving uh, uh, in future. Where we are going to be, uh, because it's very fast. Every day, it changes. So we all have, uh, we know about uh, uh, AI, which has almost become a artificial intelligence which is, huh? Yes. Uh, artificial intelligence, uh, which we uh, almost has become a layman's term, and we are saying artificial intelligence is being used by uh, not only business, but uh, by state, by everything. So, uh, what really is happening? Uh, will really this artificial intelligence substitute human intelligence? Or uh, how far uh, or how fast are we moving towards that? We'll come, we we'll just have some idea about it, but anyway, before that, first let us see where we are now. Have you uh, faced 
the sort of a situation. I think all of us who have given exams at some point of time in our life have lost this. Before the exams, of course, we try to see. Uh, we don't. There are very few, of course, I wouldn't say 100%. There are very few who are very good students who would be surely uh, covering the whole syllabus. But otherwise, we'll try to see which to study. Maybe few last few years, question papers, we'll scan, we'll do some uh, this thing to see which could be the probable questions or areas, and we study those. And uh, appear for the exams to find that, yes, there are many questions in the question paper which uh, we, uh, from the portion which we have left out. Now, what we did, we actually did a predictive analysis. From last few years' questions and from our logic of uh, 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 prediction that, okay, this can come, this can not come. We have come to a decision that these would be. So, very simply, we have done a not a quantitative uh, modeling or something, but we had done some prediction. But this sort of prediction, if can it be completely 100% proven if a model can be developed? It's nothing but a prediction model. So it can, it can be developed, then we would know the question paper before we set our, give our exams. So, uh, let's see about analytics. The primary purpose of analytics is to get to the root problems through findings driven by research, pattern-based clustering of data, and identifying similarities in data trends. Uh, so, as I was saying, analytics, uh, a bit different, basic difference from analysis was that, yeah, we have, uh, the scale is different, we have a large set of data, and there are different types of data, and uh, maybe multiple variables, and not all variables are of the same nature. There can be variables which are, as we see, uh, numeric, parametric variables. Whereas there can be variables which are textual. So integrating both textual data and numerical data together in analysis and coming out with the result could be a part of an outcome or some sort of that. So what we are doing primarily is that from the large data set, complex data set, we are trying to identify certain patterns and from those patterns trying to see whether some relationship between different variables exists or not and whether uh, from these relationships we are able to predict. So for a very simple predictive model we know regression is a very model uh, I think of a So there what we are doing is we are actually identifying the relationship between certain independent variables and the dependent variable where the actual relationship is being able to say so y is equal to v1 x1, a plus v1 x1 x2, the sort of a model we have, where we can exactly if we have the values of the independent variables, we will be able to spread it. So, but in a business situation, most of the thing, say when we are trying to understand our customers, most of the variables are not parametrized. If I try to understand my customers, whether they are satisfied or not, so what is satisfaction? How will you measure satisfaction? Today we say customer is the king. All organizations are getting customer oriented, trying to find out what will satisfy them. And if we have a product which will satisfy them, then they will automatically buy. What is customer satisfaction? Feedback. Feedback. Impact. Feedback. Feedback. Customer feedback is feedback. What? what? Like features of the product. Feature of the product. So, uh, able to fulfill the demands of the customers. 
Okay, give customer satisfaction. Think about yourself. You also, I think all of you who are working, all of us are working in an organization. And uh, there is a, a situation or uh, something which you can see as job satisfaction. So are you satisfied with the job that you are doing? So how will you define job satisfaction? Okay, I'll, I'll take one very important point which she said is the feeling. Satisfaction is a feeling of fulfillment. Fulfillment of what? Of my expectations. So in a job scenario, all employees will have certain expectations from the authorities or the organization or from the job that I'm doing. So if those expectations are met, are fulfilled, then I'm satisfied. This is out of the job. And uh, I'm also satisfied. If it is not met, I'm dissatisfied. Uh, she had mentioned one more term. What was that? Delight is a stage where I cross my expectations. So if I am uh, over and above satisfied, then I'm delighted. But uh, of course, uh, in very few situations we face that. Anyway, coming back, so satisfaction is a feeling. So how do I measure it? I cannot say this is so many kilos, so many uh, centimeters, so many. So, this is what I'm, of course, we cannot, this, this sort of, uh, we cannot tell the variables, we call them constructs, which we try to define by different dimensions. Uh, all those things, are, I'm not going to go into details about how we can do the measurement. What I'm trying to say is, that means our whole uh, decisions or the business that I'm trying to do, where so many people are involved, there can be so many variables or constructs which I'm dealing with, which are not, cannot be measured by absolute uh, units. So for them, we, de we design scales to measure them which we call internal skills. So, uh, those, so uh, I'm not going to go into details of all those measures. What I'm trying to say is, that means uh, any business decision, which apparently if we see, uh, okay, let me try to predict by an impression that will not be very good because the uh, the number of variables involved are also many and the type of variables are also very complex. So here comes that the simplistic models which we started with, say maybe a regression model, is the relationship between independent and dependent variables, but how the variables are underlying constructs, they are, they are, they are interrelated. So, we'll find situations which are uh, uh, networked situations. It's all variables connected to them. So, with one data point, increase in data point, there can be exponential increase in number of relationships. So, this is where we are moving on to, instead of <laughs> statistical techniques, we are moving on to machine learning. So, um, before I go into details about machine learning, just to give you an uh, idea about the business analytics, it is nothing but this process of data collection and how I'm just giving you slides. What business analytics does is it used to analyze data from multiple sources to uncover the hidden patterns in large data sets, to distribute information to relevant stakeholders through dashboards and reports, and monitor KPIs and trends in real time, and tweak vital business information based on latest updates. 
uh, uh, I, uh, uh, in, in a uh, management scenario, uh, what is the dashboard? One analysis in a one screen, single screen. Yeah, so uh, the dashboard is, uh, the name dashboard has come from what? From the dashboard of a car. Where you are having all the vital parameters in front of you to take decisions as to how you're going to drive your car. Starting from the speed to mileage to uh, your fuel, etc. etc. So, dashboard for managers is very important. Where all the vital informations are there and real-time information. So that from this real-time information, they can uh, have a total monitoring of what is going on where and what is going on. One more thing I must tell you, uh, managers who are in the world, even big organizations, whatever you mean, None of them are very good at the statistical techniques or analysis or that. So for them, what you have to do is, after analysis, what results you get, you have to give those findings in the language they would understand and they would need to take decisions. So that is also a part of an analysis. So, uh, what they are going to do is, they are going to see these reports and dashboards. In fact, uh, uh, say, uh, a lot of data is generated in a business organization every day. Starting, if you see, uh, say, a weekly data, a daily, even uh, it could be daily sales data, weekly data, monthly data, but the more and more important decisions are being taken at the top level. Now the same function, uh, say uh, in, in, in the sales data, say, see, now the VP marketing will not be interested to know the individual salesperson's weekly sales data. But the territory manager under whom those salespersons are working, for him that information is very important. So, a lot of data is there in the information, but across the levels you would, and across the uh, functions, you would require different types of So the management information system which is there, MIS in an organization, now that MIS, you are going to get, attain the information which you need, the individual managers would require different uh, and that is done by the VSS. So, what is happening is your analytics would be giving different analysis for different levels or different types of decisions and each individual managers would be getting, seeing the output and accordingly take a decision. So, if at the, uh, uh, the, the say, general manager level you see the sales of a particular territory is falling in the last quarter continuously. Then you need to find out why, what is the, the reason. Now, there could be so many reasons why sales are Any idea? So if it is a seasonal thing. Competition. So maybe competitor is uh, giving same product in US price of this office. Okay, okay. Or maybe uh, uh, the competitor has come up with a uh, uh, promotional scheme. So people have switched. Anything, anything? Yes? Changing trends. Changing trends. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Test, tastes and preferences. But uh, that, okay. So you are saying well, within a quarter, your tastes have changed. Preferences have changed. Preferences can change. One is because of some external factors like 
your competitor is giving you uh, some uh, buy two get one free or some some incentive, so you have uh, started buying your competitor's product. Promotion price of the competitors can be the factors. Anything else? Due to technological advancement, maybe. And that can happen, but that will not be a very short term. Uh, yes. uh, so, what I'm trying to see is. Can be any, any uh, demographic or geological crisis in this? Yeah, demographic factor also is uh, to uh, extend long term. Any situations like pandemic, endemic. Okay, but, uh, yeah. So, uh, for any, any such behavior, uh, there are uh, some external factors and some internal factors. So external or macro factors, as we call, one of them can be, so there can be a recession. So it, that also can be a reason. So those are economic factors, or someone told about preferences or demographic, so demographic factors, social factors, technological factors. These are all macro factors, which are generally going to impact in the long term, but uh, these factors, the organization, one individual organization cannot do it. They only can adopt to that or, or adapt to that changes what happens. It's like a But uh, you are not thinking about the organization. Say the salespeople who are responsible for meeting, maybe they were not meeting the targets. Their performance is not good. Or it may be that you'll find that uh, few salespeople in that territory have left the job in this last one. Say three people have left. So automatically, sales will fall. So there can be internal, external, there can be so many factors. So, but for the manager, what is important is first. So now, if, if you try to uh, say, uh, build a model for sales pr uh, prediction <coughs> that what is going to be your sales in the coming quarter, you see there are so many factors, external factors, internal factors, micro factors, macro factors. And it's not so easy just to build a, a you, you really cannot have just a regression model to predict this. So, maybe if you uh, uh, increase your promotion, your sales may increase. But you may find that if, uh, your competitor is also increasing the promotion. So, your sales is not increased. So, there can be so many factors. But what the manager has to find out? Manager has to find out is that this should be in his fingertips, that is in the dashboard. So he would identify that this is a problem. And we are using business analytics for what? To solve business problems. So whatever uh, now, when the problem is identified, from the manager's problem, you have to convert it to your uh, problem, or rather the researcher's problem who's using analytics, to find out that how that can be data can be analyzed and you can come up with the solution. So that's one. So monitor KPI strength in real time and vital business information based on data lab and data updates. As we are saying, since any uh, new technology has been introduced. So or anything that is happening, say your budget is better. So uh, on the day of the budget, so uh, all business uh, firms are waiting for what? To see what is going to be the tax rates, whether there's going to be change in it, import duties, or whatever. Because these are the ones which are very vital information which individual managers cannot do anything. But they have to take into account. It's of course, as I mentioned, it's a multifaceted and plays a crucial role in customer relationship management, supply chain management, finance, and uh, in fact, to drive the competitive. 
advantage. Risk management, customer insights. Now, this is also very important we have to understand. The moment we think about big words like analytics, machine learning, uh, AI and all those, obviously we relate these to large organizations uh, like maybe Amazon or maybe Netflix or maybe uh, MNCs, other MNCs or maybe even in our own country, uh, maybe the Reliance or Tata's or whatever. But it's not so. Analytics can be very well be used across all sorts of organization, the small, big, or large, and across, this is not only for top management, it is for across the levels. It doesn't matter whether your company is big or small, established, or you are a startup, but accurate decision from big data will help to improve your efficiency. This is just an example. Uh, say a pizza shop may use analytics to understand the demographics of its customers and how much they spend at the restaurant. So accordingly, they can plan their promotions. Say, uh, if you find that more of kids are visiting, say your uh, shop is in a location where you find more kids are coming. So then you have your little menu changed or uh, prices for family packs different. Whereas if you see uh, more of college students coming in, then maybe you would be giving a, a promotion of coupons. So according to the customer's choices, etc., when you are changing this, it is, uh, even a small organization can do that. So what analytics is actually doing in business is like a scuba driver who first dives into the sea, sea of what? Data and information. Trying to collect the relevant ones and then the analysis project the trends and patterns which will help them to optimize their operations. So what you need of course is some level of mastery in uh, data and analysis. So numbers, data, skills is the biggest skill sets that you require. And the vastness of the field lies in leveraging the models that you are going to use there. Very quickly going through the st <coughs> stages in the process. First is data collection, then organizing the data, then model development, testing and deployment, and then communicating the results to decision makers. This is what I was saying. That most of the managers who would be using it for their decision making do not know any statistical, how to use these te uh, statistical techniques, how to even, even if their uh, findings are given, what sort of interpretation. So you have to do that and give it in a form, the report should be in a form which could be used by the managers. The major constituents of business analytics, we have to establish a workable business model. Storing data appropriately for future reference. So, uh, storing data is also uh, a part of uh, the uh, analysis, I mean, business analysis process. First, of course, is uh, establishing this workable model. So, this is where when you are doing, uh, you need to have an understanding of the theoretical strategies, and accordingly, a model can be built. It's like, say, your model for uh, customer relationship management would be different from your model of risk management or portfolio management when you are investing. The third is data visualization and representation of information. 
This is a significant component of business analytics. Data representation acts as a, a great addresser of the channelizing the reports of the critical information. Now, this uh, analytics is done via programming language. The results generated might not be understandable by non-programming person. So, you need an analyst need to be tactful in converting their findings into delivered documentation. Now, gaining help of visual representation softwares and tools will help the company employee better understand the data threats with, uh, for its efficient classification. In addition, any animations or visuals and features could be put in. Uh, uh, any visualization tool that you know of? Any software uh, which gives visualizations? And the data is instead of in the data form of just numbers, when we try to have a graphical representation, we are saying uh, it gives a better visualization. Not always graphical form, even when uh, if you put it into a particular pattern, that will, will also help it with data visualization. So maybe uh, it is sorted in uh, or a particular order, that will give an uh, idea of what's on. So data visualization software, Tableau. Tableau, VI, and even Excel to a great extent, you can use for visualization. And uh, these are the ones which the industry is also using. So uh, uh, at the dashboard level when we are talking about, which is either Excel or Tableau uh, or BI that is used as the dashboards. Another very important is to uh, understand and take care about the security of data to avoid data breaches. So, uh, cyber security norms should be very, uh, you must be aware of it and the risks involved because, as I told you, today uh, this whole analytics that we are discussing is about the large scale data or big data what we generally have been more used to the term. Now, the more access to data has also brought about more risks. And that's where we have to be careful about the threat to information. So, cybersecurity norms help in reducing the risks and hazards. And in the modern environment, we do have firewalls and bridges. Scanning of codes and other information is quite common. So, uh, Cyber security uh, stern measures should be uh, taken to reduce services. Uh, we do have robustness built into it with encapsulated or encrypted, end to end encrypted uh, data to avoid this risk being shared. Most of the softwares and tools today are pre equipped with firewalls. So, antivirus and anti theft options reduce the risk. Then the next element of analytics is data digging or data mining. I think data mining is something which you all may have heard about already. Now data mining or uh, digging is nothing but digging out the inside. That means from seeing and doing a preliminary level of analysis, we try to identify the patterns in the data and the relationship with the data. So, when you are doing the, any, uh, the first level, say think of uh, when you do a research, what is the first level of analysis that we do generally? Collection, hmm? collection. collection of data we have done. After the data collection is done and all those, in analysis, what do we first try to see? We try to use most of the times. That we say you have found out that these are my main data that I am looking for. So, accordingly, maybe you have collected those data, then uh, according to my objective of the research, uh, I will try to see mean patterns and interpretations. Okay, so some sort of descriptive analysis we do, which uh, 
Shah uh, is maybe mean, median, mode, and all those. To see what is the pattern of data that is there. And then the next level, what we try to see is whether there is any correlation between the two variables are there. Or maybe we try to uh, test some hypothesis. So, when we are trying to see whether there is some sort of relationship between two variables, uh, at the first level of uh, analysis we are doing is, say, correlation. But correlation uh, tells us what? And if the latent is there, then correlation is there. Then, there is, we can say, some sort of association between these two. That if this increases, this will also increase. Nothing much more. All that we can say is that these two are variables are related to C. So, at this, from this, of course, this is also very important information, especially in. Uh, business, even uh, these type of information is very important. Uh, next level, uh, what we try to find out? So if we find there is a correlation, then we may try to find out what is the relation. So first we are trying to see whether they are related, that means whether there is any uh, relationship between so a correlation matrix would give us an idea about which are the variables related to which one and what is the strength of the relationship. But that strength of the relationship doesn't give us an idea of how they are doing. Neither can you predict. So you may say that this will increase if this increases, but you will not be able to say that if x increases by two units, how much? With one that we can only say if we are able to come up with the exact relationship between them. So, the next level of more complex analysis, we move on to this sort of relationship, maybe by regression or maybe by uh, you can have discriminant analysis or any sort of multivariate analysis a lot of where we can find out what is the exact relationship. But sometimes we see that uh, it, it's not that there are many factors which and they are all related interrelated. So in that case, what we try to study is the interrelationships. And we try to see from uh, reduce from a large data set to some smaller dimensions or factors. So we may do some factor analysis. What else sort of analysis we can do from a large uh, set of data? We may try to find out what are the similar characteristics of each of those and group them into different categories. This is what the basic of a multivariate analysis which we call cluster analysis. So we are clustering similar objects into Now all these of course down the line there are very strong statistical techniques which you are using. I am just trying to give you the concept of what these analysis is. So if when we are doing data mining we are actually like I guess scuba divers, you say, or you can, data mining is more, I would say, uh, with uh, the coal miners who get inside the uh, 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 ground and extract the coal. So, what we are doing similarly, you go into the pool of data to find out what are the similarities between the data points. Characteristics, means what are the similar characteristics they have or you find out whether there is some relationship between those data points. So from that, you can see whether any pattern is emerging or any relationship is emerging. And this is what we call this data mining. 
And data mining is one of the uh, tools of machine learning. And from that, after that what we do, next stage is forecasting the future. So, uh, of course, forecasting is not to predict the future, but to tell you what you need to know to take meaningful action in the present. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, in fact, relevant not only for data, but even for our life, you can say. Uh, it's, when we are trying to predict and tell the future, it is more to give an idea that in future, uh, even even if we are able, can give an idea that these are the problems that are going to be difficult. So I should take this action so that in future uh, my problems are solved. So forecasting is an essential practice that needs to be done last uh, for business analytics since it helps in measuring the risk of potential hazards, threats, and obstructions that can hinder from finding possible business insights allows business to look how they are different departments, such as those marketing, finance, HR, sales, etc., would look like in future. So having a well-developed framework for understanding the future patterns is what we are doing in the future. So this, uh, I'm just trying to give some examples that how uh, data analytics we are using in uh, different functional areas, Say in marketing and sales, it can be uh, that uh, managers would make more accurate decisions if they know about uh, the salespeople, how they can. It's not only about uh, the customers, but about your own colleagues also. So, when uh, in, in the sales, it's uh, very important. Uh, uh, analytics can be used to predict <coughs> behaviors. All people are will not respond similarly in same situations. So even to motivate people working under you, you have to have different ways by which you can motivate them. So what are the things by which they are different and how they can evolve? So these also can be analyzed. So here we are analyzing behavior. So again, these data points or these uh, predictions are not based on regression. Uh, and in uh, marketing sense, there could be uh, many uh, identifying if it is customers, then which customers are most likely to respond to which offer find the best product for a given customer, best price for a given product, effectiveness in advertising, campaigns, identifying. Station uh, and supply chain, a lot of uh, applications are there, uh, starting from supply selection to predictive maintenance. Uh, predictive maintenance technique. I think you all have heard about the term preventive maintenance. Can you uh, differentiate or tell me the difference between predictive maintenance and preventive maintenance? <laughs> By the meaning of the word only. Okay. That's the preventive maintenance. You see, means we are projecting or forecasting something. And whereas predict, uh, preventive means we are trying to prevent the occurrence of an unforeseen situation. So by that we are uh, in, uh, in the... So uh, how will you prevent an uh, unforeseen situation? Uh, you can you prevent the foreseen situation. Yes. Uh, Ma'am, by taking uh, you know, calculated safety measures, controlling mechanisms. Yeah, preventive maintenance is uh, where you, your uh, decision is that means you have information about all the consequences. So you are, you can tell that in this sort of a consequence if it happens, we should take these steps so that it doesn't happen. But predictive is where you are trying to predict in future this sort of situation can happen. So if it happens, you have to do this. So predictive uh, maintenance is primarily based on MN. 
is a machine learning. Whereas preventive techniques more to, uh, can be, uh, I would say, uh, expert system based also. Expert systems are what? Uh, before ML came in, we uh, used to have a lot of application of expert systems. Expert systems are prelude to AI. Where uh, you are giving all the information as far as possible to the uh, uh, analysis software. Where, based on all these data points, they are able to give you, okay, if you are to do this, this is the best option, this is the best option. But there, it totally depends on the data that you have given. And from those data, if this is the data, okay? if this is the event, this is the, this sort of a uh, decision is given. But here, what is happening? Different ways from the large data set, the software is learning that if this is the data, combination of data set, then this is the response that or uh, investor. And based on that learning, you are giving a prediction. So that is a machine learning. So you are training or making the machine learn something. How do we learn? From all the information that we have and from the experience. That means repeatedly you are exposing them to those situations. So, because learning is how? It's based on our experience. A, a child could very easily touch the, say a kid, the flame of a candle. Because either he or she doesn't know or has not been told or has not had the experience that this is not. So if they touch and uh, experience, they will not now do it again. Or before hand only, they have been told and uh, that knowledge is given to them, please go back to me. So learning, this is the process by which we learn. So similar process, we are making the machine learn by the whole large data set of all the different combinations. But if this happens, then what is going to be the outcome? So, on an iterative process, this is done many number of times. So, the machine knows that if this is the situation, this is going to be. That is known as supervised learning. So, this is again human resource. Human resource. Uh, is uh, HR people in an organization are the ones, if you know, if, uh, management teachers, uh, you would know that uh, all the students who would like to opt for HR are the ones who are afraid of maths. I don't want to go into all those, so you take HR. But in HR, the maximum amount, a lot of applications are because the biggest challenge for HR today is not only to recruit the right person, but to see that they stay with you. Retention. Now, uh, people leaving the organization is a loss to the organization because you train the person, you know, then you will be seen, and then again, you know, uh, the more, uh, again, you uh, interact new people, so that's much more. Possibly. So, how to retain your employees uh, is the biggest challenge. And uh, now, in fact, uh, you can predict that who would be the people who would be living in the organization in the coming three months, or who, which type of personality people are going to stay, what are their citizenship behaviors, what are their success, all those things from the uh, data set of the individuals, even personality types may be taken. So there can, there can be a huge number of data points of an individual person, of the situation, all put together. You can predict uh, 
not only you know, who would be the uh, right person to take it. So it is going to give you uh, input for improvement, for training, for all HR functions in that can be very well done. Customer service. Okay. And AI is something which, as I was telling you, has become uh, some sort of uh, layman's term now. What is the most common use we all know of where AI is being used? And we are part of that. Recommendation system. Recommendation system. Oh, right. And when we use an app, better software or okay. In our internet usage, uh, online, uh, it can be online buying or online search or online anything, our behavior on the net. So, now, how is that coming? If we turn off the mic of our phone, then it's also a user recommendation system for this. This is basically on the sensor. Sensor is based on it. You have to read our mind through a Google is trying to do it. Uh, basically, they are uh, tapping the data points of your behavior. So, uh, whatever is possible. And now in fact we all say that Google knows what we are eating, when we are uh, sleeping, whatever we are doing, everything Google knows is there. Now, what is this knowing? That means, uh, but uh, you just imagine the uh, level of data points with which this prediction is being done. Because there are uh, billions of people who are using it. And for each one, there can be so many data points to be done. So, in fact, but what is happening? You can be personalized more and more. So, an individual, what is the preference of that individual? Uh, the uh, business organization can track. And accordingly, if you are brought up, Accordingly, customize your product if needed. Can get, uh, more importantly, what they are doing is promotion, personalized advertisements, and those personalized advertisements are also being generated automatically. So the moment you, uh, we all get a lot of the moment we search or just if we have clicked something that we wanted to see you will find a whole related thing so all those information will start coming. So, uh, this is the level of uh, application that you are there. And uh, you will see not only that, they will say that uh, people like you have problems. So, you feel that, okay, that means, so that, that's some sort of a persuasion, indirect persuasion they are doing for promoting them. So many ways that is being done. So uh, yes, e-commerce is the biggest uh, something which uh, we, or in our experience, that is the biggest thing that we can understand that uh, big data is being used for. Finance, of course, a lot of things can be done, that is starting from the forecasting spending and revenue, optimizing pricing, uh, measuring efficiency of any uh, campaigns, analyzing financial performance, everything. Very briefly, I'll just tell you uh, all of these business analytics that we were uh, talking about. Primarily are four types. Descriptive, diagnostic, predictive, and prescriptive. So descriptive explains what has happened. Diagnostic explains why it happened. Predictive actually forecasts. And prescriptive tells you what you should do. So this is the descriptive. Descriptive, though this is at the lowest level of analysis. For business, it's very, it's not uh, unimportant. A lot 
of decision, and one of uh, all of you must have heard about SWOT analysis. In SWOT analysis, what are we doing? We are basically doing this. It's a descriptive analysis where we are trying to see what has happened, what are the things that are there, what are our strengths, what are our weaknesses, what are the threats, opportunities. So what has happened, we are analyzing that. Some common myths and skipping. Diagnostic analysis tells you why it happened. So you try to understand the reason behind it. Uh, and predictive. So there are different types of analysis that you do, root cause analysis, retrospective analysis. These are different techniques by which uh, uh, analysis is done. Regression analysis. So predictive analysis actually predominantly answers the question, what is going to happen? These two were based on the past data. So, uh, the first two were based on the past data or the present data, whereas this is based on the past and data we are trying to predict what is likely to happen. And this is the most important type of analysis which is uh, important in uh, business. Customer pricing, retail capacity, everything can be included in this. And very importantly, prescriptive analysis tells you what to do. So it helps analyze all information gathered and a solution. But here it is more of a uh, long term, like whether you're going to introduce a product, new product into the market, or uh, if you want to, uh, whether you need to hire more people. Uh, the, the HR position, or uh, you are going to discontinue with one of your brands. So, if these sorts of decisions is going to come to you. Two other very important analytics is text analytics and spatial analytics. Text analysis has become a very important sort of analysis. And uh, as we were saying, all the data points. Are uh, uh, a lot of information is data is uh, available from the net, and that is a lot of data is text data. Say uh, when it, we if you review and analyze all the reviews, anything that we want to buy online, first thing what we do is we see what are the reviews of that. So the if you analyze those uh, reviews. Uh, those are nothing but text data. Someone has just written some uh, lines on So they are not uh, numerical data. So how do you do the text analysis? So then also you have to find out keywords which are similar. And in fact, uh, 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 sentiment analysis can be also done. There is a technique of doing by which you can assess the sentiments and emotions of the people you have given those. And that is a very important sort of findings by which you can predict as to what sort of behavior you are looking for. So uh, text analysis has become very important today. And uh, along with that, I would also mention text and uh, picture, that is visuals. A lot of data today is not only uh, numerical, but of course it's audio, video, and text. So these audio-video data analysis, it cannot be done by statistical techniques as we are doing. So you need other techniques to do those. Those are the ones we are talking about as uh, machine learning techniques, deep learning techniques. Hello. And uh, these are just some examples which I think uh, many of you may be knowing, uh, like companies uh, like Netflix, Amazon, who have used actually uh, these uh, machine learning or AI techniques 
to incorporate their decision making with business decisions. So, in fact, Netflix focused on applications of business analytics and made the users complete their watch time. They found out that what is the average uh, hours that uh, they are watching and accordingly uh, they uh, gave uh, content so that they would complete that watch time. And more importantly, uh, they also um, uh, came up with a thing which enabled automatic suggestion in the viewers to spend more time on the platform and came up with an autoplay option which automatically after one you will go on viewing the others. Amazon Live, which is uh, the forerunner of this e-commerce, now we know the, uh, Amazon as an e-commerce platform, but uh, Amazon was the first to start uh, this e-commerce platform, uh, uh, selling only books and nothing else, uh, because Amazon was a bookseller initially. From hard copy books, they were the first to go online. And uh, obviously, with the amount of uh, information and data available about its users on the net, uh, uh, when they have come up with the e-commerce platform, they are trying to utilize it to its fullest. In fact, uh, how really this uh, online uh, behaviors are being uh, utilized and uh, different decisions are taken by different uh, manufacturers, I would say, to uh, increase their, uh, this is not only uh, going personalized, but uh, it is actually increasing their cost efficiency. They, the companies are actually spending much less on the promotion, but getting much more effective help. Uh, if you uh, see today, gaming, online gaming has become an industry. In fact, it is going to be announced as a, a gaming industry itself because the turnover is so high. And uh, these are, because online, so it goes beyond the barrier of the country also. And uh, what we found, in fact, one of my scholars is doing a research on uh, online gaming, personalized ads to online gaming. So, those who play games, online games only, how really uh, even uh, they are tracking that what are the typical products they use, what are the brands they use, and uh, they are incorporating personalized messages about those brands in the game itself. So to what extent they are going uh, with the personalization? Uh, where? Uh, now, why? Primarily because when you play games, you concentrate. The concentration level is so high that uh, it happens that uh, the, the memory or the uh, recall value of that uh, information is high. So anyway, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, various types of behaviors are being explored and accordingly the decisions are being taken. It's not only in marketing but uh, across all disciplines, all business disciplines that this is being used. Nissan as we know is a world famous uh, auto company and uh, there they became in the motorsport world especially with their sports cars. And what they have done is, they are using racing video games to hire people. So it's, it's it apparently you would think that what has this to do with uh, hiring people who are racers. Now, the, they're uh, actually collaborated with Sony to create an annual contest for finding the best gaming racers. Why? The objective was to find the best racers and transform them into real life racing drivers. So you see what sort of uh, rather decisions these uh, companies are taking using uh, analytics and trying to find out more uh, information and knowing uh, your customers and stakeholders to their extent. 
Now, just going through the, the different advanced analytics that are now being used, um, um, we will just touch upon on some common advanced uh, analytic techniques, data mining, text mining, data aggregation, forecasting, and visualization. More or less, I have touched on all these and tried to explain how these are being used or what actually these are. I'm not going into the technical details of the statistical or uh, mathematical models, but what these actually do and how we use them. Uh, big data analytics, in fact, is uh, something which we all know. Now, this concept of big data and using of big data uh, uh, has uh, passed uh, over a decade, has increased. And many companies are doing that, but it, again, big data has also something to do with uh, the availability which uh, is over the internet. So uh, many companies are now trying to uh, get information about uh, their not only customers, but even their competitors, market, everything from the internet and big data segments, large amount of data is being analyzed. Big data analytics refers to the process of analyzing large and complex data sets and to uncover the hidden patterns, correlations, and insights that may be used for making decisions. And uh, uh, data analytics also uh, is a complex and multidisciplinary field which involves use of various techniques and tools to extract meaningful insights from large data sets. So this big data analytics is a, a term which we hear. Uh, so I just wanted to explain this. Uh, all these things are related terms. In fact, the techniques that we are using when we say big data analytics, the analytic, the uh, main uh, methods of analysis that we are using is similar to the ones we mentioned, like data mining techniques or um, ML techniques or supervised learning and all, so I just come to that and I can So this has uh, become increasingly important and by leveraging uh, the insights gained from big data, organizations are now improving their competitive uh, advantage, reducing costs. However, this also has certain challenges. Uh, other than that, these are few of the techniques which uh, now are being used, like cloud computing, artificial intelligence and machine learning, and natural language processing. These are a uh, few of the techniques which are now being actually used by uh, the analytics uh, based on the big data. Now, what is cloud computing? Cloud computing provides us a platform which you are not having in your organization but on the net. A large um, uh, availability of a large space for data storing and uh, uh, the organizations can, with scalable and flexible resources, can be used to store large amount of data. Because if we are dealing with uh, trillions of data points, in fact. So if that is the level of data point, how much data storage can an individual organization use? Now, uh, I have just mentioned that even small organizations who are, or maybe startups, are also using an analytics. So how are they doing it? It's primarily, uh, they are taking advantage of cloud computing. Artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, any idea on these two, what these two are, whether they are related or same or different? The machine learning is the part of artificial intelligence. Okay, machine learning is a part of artificial intelligence. What is artificial intelligence? What is artificial intelligence? We humans, we are now trying to come up with our duplicates in the sense that we are trying to develop something who would be like us. Who can automatically work our works. So, uh, with the objective that yes, we will uh, do our work, reduce our work, uh, 
uh, but uh, there is another very big challenge that uh, will they substitute us? If we go on, will there be a point where uh, the humans will become uh, meaningless? If we are developing a system where our intelligence can be substituted by machine, then where would our edge be? Anyway, that's something different thing to look at. But right now, artificial intelligence is uh, all those uh, techniques using all those uh, uh, data sets by which. Now, what is the difference? Some sort of critical thinking or rational decision making uh, uh, methods are included by which artificial intelligence is taking this. So we will go uh, a bit more into details. Second year, that artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms are used to analyze large complex data sets and identify patterns and insights that are difficult for humans to detect. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, the limitation that we have is that if the data set becomes too large, then it is not possible for an individual to identify all those uh, patterns. That means uh, finding out what are the common things, what are the different things, what are the relationships, which a machine or a software uh, can do. And, other and third is natural language processing. This has also revolutionized the total uh, uh, world in decision making. What is natural language processing? It is how we speak a language. So whether that machine can understand and interpret me. So natural language, natural language processing is a technology that enables computers to understand, interpret, and respond to given language. So NLP is often used in text analytics applications such as sentiment analysis, topic modeling, chatbots, which is so commonly used. So what are chatbots? All the Alexas and cities where you just give a command. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Okay. Check out. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Or I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. So, uh, now, till now, of course, uh, Alexa is able to handle English. Uh, not, uh, still not able to handle Bengali. But uh, we are very fast coming up with uh, NLP uh, algorithms which will also uh, handle different other local languages. So, this is something, especially as we said, the more and more we are going into this, we are finding that it's not only numbers that need to be analyzed, but text, visuals, photos, everything uh, is data points which can be analyzed to come up with a lot of information for required for decision making in business. So uh, NLP is one such thing. Just very simple as I told you, if we have to analyze uh, all the reviews that are given. Now, when we are looking at your time to see what they have done, and that sort of analysis was very preliminary level. But when there is a large number of reviews, or say uh, you analyze all the Twitter data to get an idea of what is the general sentiment of the public before elections. So you uh, take all Twitter data of all political leaders and you can do an analysis and can even predict, in fact, uh, the one of our, since I know someone, who before uh, the last election in America, before the, the famous Trump election, the Trump was defeated. But that time a very, uh, uh, what to say, neck to neck fight was going on before the election about campaigning. So at that point of time, we had done that analysis taking all Twitter breakers, all political parties, both uh, conservative and uh, so. And 
that he, in this prediction, showed that yes, uh, Trump's popularity is falling. And finally, we uh, saw the previous election there. So, if properly done, even uh, from this we can predict, even from textual data we can do a lot of predictions. In fact, now researchers are going on, so we generally think finance is an area which is to do with some numbers. So, uh, we have uh, the stock market analysis primarily based on certain parameters of performance parameters of the uh, equities of the uh, companies. And we predict that this can happen. In fact, uh, one of the research, very recent research is showing that they did uh, this sort of an, uh, sentiment analysis from all these uh, uh, writings about stock market that comes out to newspapers, about the performance of the stocks about the market, and all um, video of the programs which happens like Profit Class, uh, Nifty Class, and all those uh, which are to do with stock market programs. Uh, their analysis, the experts who analyzes their uh, version after analysis. They came out with prediction of performance of uh, some companies which are actually were doing very well at that point of time, but they predicted that in coming five years that stocks are going to, in fact, the companies are going to go into bankruptcy. So you see how uh, uh, the, even the textual data can have such strong. Uh, I would say, power of tradition, if we can use that. Uh, machine learning is, of course, the backbone of today's uh, turning data into insights and insights into action and predictability. That's what machine learning is doing. And machine learning is a new area of data mining that allows the computer to go. I've been talking about machine learning a lot. I will just mention one thing, that machine learning is there are two types, supervised machine learning techniques and unsupervised machine learning techniques. So in supervised uh, techniques, what we do is, uh, we, uh, from label data, uh, the inference is drawn. And for unsupervised techniques, it is unlabeled data to identify the hidden existing factors. So one is uh, classification, or regression that we can do, that is exactly finding out the relationship, and in this, we can do clustering. So these are uh, basically the machine learning techniques. Uh, in fact, there are many statistical uh, tools which are using this sorts of supervised so learning. In fact, say, suppose we have built a model, and uh, 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 part of the data we are using to build the model, that is, by supervised learning. So we give those label data points, put it into the model, run it, and of course, there are softwares where we are not running it once, but 10,000 times, say. So in fact, in uh, structured equation modeling, when we use, uh, we are actually doing that. We are uh, in bootstrapping, we are running it, say, for 10,000 times, to, and that gives uh, that those data points are randomly chosen by the software from the total data set. So they come up with a model. So if that model is uh, properly tested, that yes, it's validated, then you can, for another data set, see how far it is going to predict. That is the general visibility. So that is also some sort of a uh, supervised machine learning technique that we are using now for research. Uh, OK, so that goes. AI, ML, and uh, deep learning is nothing but uses uh, another technique which is known as uh, network analysis. Uh, and uh, that talks about not only the input data but the output data, but you have different layers in between and different data points layers where each of those points are also interrelated. So you have a network of uh, 
points, which from which you are finally getting the now this is not talking about relationship. So at one point of time, the value of the data, whatever it is predicting, will be. So if you want uh, a uh, uh, prediction with the available, uh, 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 I would say that is not a location, but a cross-sectional uh, prediction, but at that point of time, the data that uh, is being fed into will give you that output. But taking care of all many uh, hidden parameters, which I don't know, or the researcher doesn't know, the, uh, this, or the business managers don't know, that what it is happening. They are only seeing that if this is the input, this is that. But that's what business decisions are based on. Sometimes they may not try to understand the why, but they're trying to understand the what. So for a large data set, a large number of what information is there with me, my decision is made. So uh, that's uh, deep learning. So applications, we have chatbots, we have recommendation engines, which we all of us are experiencing every day. We have dynamic pricing. So this is real-time data you can change your pricing according to the individual customers. Say there are customers who are risk takers, there are customers who are risk averters. So how will you negotiate and give a best price for each? You can do that. Then you make pricing. Customer churn modeling, this is also very important. How many people are leaving uh, the uh, or very important. Uh, for credit card analysis. How many uh, are not going to pay their, uh, their credit card bills? Who are the ones? They are able to track them. And if they observe for a few, then they will also give uh, this thing to discontinue. So uh, what is the loss coming up out of that? All those analysis can be very well be done by fraud detection. So this is another prominent use of machine learning. Uh, this started not today for credit cards, fraud detection using machine learning has been, uh, uh, been actually being done uh, more than two decades back. One of my uh, friends, is, uh, he was uh, head of SPSS in Bangalore. He was the one who was actually doing uh, these for their uh, credit card guide back to that. HBF, HSBC credit cards, which make this. Cyber threat detection, this can also be done. Um, optimization, obviously, for any sort of uh, uh, process, management process, optimization is something which we look for. That means it's not minimum cost and uh, maximum benefit, but optimal. Optimization for any process is required or any decision support systems, DSS. As I was telling you, this I have already mentioned predictive maintenance and monitoring for it. Predictive maintenance is uh, uh, not preventive maintenance, but it is, uh, 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 it can precisely identify that what maintenance should be done at what time. Sentiment analysis also discussed, information extraction also discussed. I'll just touch upon AI as something. AI is nothing but AI is a technology that enables computers and machines to simulate human intelligence problem solving capabilities. And uh, in fact, 94% of business leaders say that AI would be critical to their success over the next five years. And because operations management is uh, defined that F, uh, AI is a powerful tool for operations manager reducing cost and improving operational efficiency. So uh, this system helps operations manager to discover the bottlenecks Predict equipment failures and adapt to market effects. So these sort of things 
could not have been done by individual managers if uh, when we run uh, because this information is also not there and the support analysis and uh, interesting is also not there. Uh, this augmented analytics is a term which is used to uh, describe use of machine learning, artificial intelligence and national lang natural language processing together. And that is what is known as augmented analysis. So we are now moving towards that. Previously, machine learning and AI, then uh, uh, analytics came in. So now, these three things, more and more complex situations, more we are able to analyze. So augmented analytics is something which is the thing. But augmented analysis is still, I would say, the present. But what is there for us in the future? Is AGI. What is AGI? So imagine a world where machines are in confined to pre programmed tasks but operate with human like autonomy and computers. A world where computer minds find self driving cars, delved into complex scientific research, provide personalized customer service, and even explore the unknown. This is what and uh, the time that we have taken to come to AI, uh, the, the graph is exponentially moving fast towards AGI because uh, of the available information and data points that with all these things that we talked about, cloud computing, everything getting integrated together. Say uh, we are very fast now. What is the difference between AI and AGI? is that AGI is something which is intuitive. It's not only going to predict, but also can give intuitions and also understand uh, emotions, which an AI is not able to Now that is something which is human, where human is above machines. Now if uh, that emotional aspect is also understood by machine and responses of machines are according to the emotions, then a lot of human aspect could be actually replicated. And that's where we are moving to. Artificial general intelligence is known as aging. A hypothetical technology that may be poised to revolutionize near every aspect of human life and work. While AGI remains theoretical today, organizations can take proactive steps to prepare for its arrival by building a robust data infrastructure, fostering collaborative environment where humans and AI will work together seamlessly. Now, why? And in fact, organizations are investing in their AGI. So uh, that, that's, they have already seen that that's the future. They are spending money on that. And uh, generally, GAI assists. This is the feedback of the uh, organizations where they see that will help in coding, audio, image. So they have already calculated that the uh, video generation also is expensive already, but these are where they are going to use AGI and get the return on investments. So they have already started investing in that. And this is what is different, visual perception, audio perception, fine motor skills. These are the things which present AI doesn't have. And these are the things which they are trying to replicate about the human, the motor skills, the audio perception, the video perception. You know, audio and video perception is so very different in other machine, this thing and it. Suppose it's a very simple thing. You are crossing a road from one side to the other. How many decisions or how complex the decision is if you just simply try to understand, because one car is coming with the speed, so you have to assess the speed of that car, you are assessing that by the time the car comes, you will cross 
So all these things are, are so many complex decisions. Not one. But we do it so easily. But for a, a robot that has to be, if a robot has to do it, then that has to be programmed immensely. Maybe then they will be able to do Still now, an automated car going in a traffic jam in the roads of Calcutta will not be able to operate. Maybe in a highway, it's okay. Anyway, so uh, these are the things which problem solving, navigation, creativity is another very important thing which has not been able to uh, come up with social and emotional engagement. And I'll just end with the last slide. AGI might be science fiction for now. Organizations can get ready and train, validate, tune, and deploy AI models to help scale and accelerate the impact of AI. And why AGI? Problems to achieve autonomy beyond general AI. Even the most advanced systems still require human expertise to function effectively. So, most importantly, no matter the strength of AI, we go strong. Data scientists, AI engineers, computers, and this essential support. So, the, yeah, we will not, of course, outdone by machine. Humans will remain above the machine. That's all.